Hi, I'm Rebecca Balcarcel. Let's talk about Shooting an Elephant, the essay by George Orwell. Now, a lot of folks read this and think, man, this guy is a coward. He did not do what his conscience told him to do, and pff, I don't want to read any more about him. And that's a natural reaction. It's true he does something that he himself knows is wrong, shooting the elephant. However, let's take a deeper look and see if we can figure out why he shoots the elephant, his motivation, and how this action that he is ashamed of really substitutes or symbolizes the action of the entire British Empire and how that too is a shameful uh, act. So he starts out by being very frank with us and revealing some of the uglier aspects of the empire. He mentions the jails and the cages people are in. He mentions that there's anti-British feeling among the populace, which is natural because they're being ruled over by this British empire. And Orwell himself thinks that that's bad. He, he's on the side of the native people. He is the enemy of these people, even though he's philosophically on their side. So intellectually, he's on their side, but physically, he is a police officer in the British uh, machinery, you know, and he has to be a cog in that larger wheel. And so these people do not like him, even though he likes them. But then he admits, well, he doesn't like them all the time because sometimes they insult him, they trip him on the soccer field. There's this resentment there, as one would expect. These folks are being controlled and ruled over in their own country. They have been invaded, so of course they are unhappy with that. And he represents the empire, so they don't like him either. Now this is a tough position to be in. So he's in a struggle already because he doesn't like his job. He says, I should have chucked it up a long time ago because I had already decided that it was a bad thing to be part of the empire. So here he is in this moral quandary even before the elephant comes along. Now, when the elephant does come along, he finds himself acting in this role of, okay, I'm this British police officer and I'm supposed to know what to do. I'm supposed to be courageous. I'm supposed to act decisively. And so he does. And he ends up fulfilling the role instead of following his personal will. And when he says that there's a mask and your face grows to fit it, he's talking about the role of the empire and maybe the role of a police officer in this empire. He's going to grow to fit that role and do what a police officer is supposed to do instead of what he knows is right. So being in the role he is, takes away some of his personal freedom, or he feels that it does, and he explains that he's rather young at the time too, so maybe as an older person he might have been able to courageously make a different decision. But he was fulfilling the role that was expected. Now the whole empire is doing something similar. The, the British ruling peoples in Burma and other places like India find themselves acting out the puppet role instead of actually being human beings and following what they know to be right. Everybody's kind of caught up in this system and because the system is bad and wrong then people in it start acting badly and wrongly in spite of themselves because they're filling the role. So he's pointing out that when a person becomes a tyrant, in a sense, that person is giving up their own freedom because now they have to take on that role of tyrant. And that tyrant person is now not free to behave as a person who's not a tyrant. So the whole empire is being uh, examined here through the lens of this one officer and his one experience. Now why does he shoot that elephant? Ah, okay, so I've said that partly it's his role. He wants to look like a responsible police officer who knows what he's doing. Another aspect, though, is the pressure that's coming from these thousands. Now, not just tens, hundreds, but thousands of people gathering around him, expecting him to act a certain way. So 
yes, the role, but also the expectation of these people. And that really makes him feel frightened of what will happen if he disappoints these people. He uses the word theater a couple of times. He talks about this whole drama unfolding and that people wanted their bit of fun, just like an English audience would want to witness some event like this. Ooh, an elephant's going to be shot. Everybody's excited. You know, it's like reality TV shows. People are titillated and they come to watch this big event. So what if he disappoints them? He's actually afraid of what will happen. And he also does not want to be laughed at. And he says this a couple of times, including the last line of the essay, where he says, I did it to avoid looking a fool. And he's referring again that to his role as a white man in the East. He's supposed to appear to always know what to do and to act decisively. And so he goes ahead and does it because he doesn't want to look like he doesn't know what he's doing or that he's wavering. And so since he's not supposed to be afraid, he isn't. Since he's not supposed to waver, he doesn't, even though in his heart that's not what he wants to do. So here's a man who's struggling with being a representative of the empire, struggling with having to fulfill the role rather than do what he knows is right. And that's a struggle that we all face. Not anyone walks around proud of every single thing they've ever done or said. So here is his confession of something he is ashamed of. But he also is pointing to a larger issue of the empire being a shameful institution as well. All right, well, I hope this helps you understand some aspects of the essay. There's more to talk about. And if you want to leave your ideas in the comments, then that would be cool, and I'll try to respond to those. Hope you enjoyed our little talk.